The YouTube comment section. Usually an absolutely horrid place that you wouldn't want to be caught dead with it. But honestly, my comment section is usually pretty great. So shout out to you guys. And, you know, while you're at it, you, you know, go, go check it out. Go check it out for yourself. While you're down there, leave a comment yourself. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Please, it helps with my engagement. Please do it. Anyway, straying away from the e-begging, we're gonna get back to my point. I was going through my comments one day when I saw this comment from this guy. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this name. You're gonna have to forgive me, but like, what the fuck is this? He recommended that I read this manga called Cross Game. I looked it up to see what it was, and the art style was immediately really fucking cute. And on top of that, it was a romance, which is my favorite genre. This motherfucker is really after my heart. This manga was rated really highly and even has an anime adaptation, but I've never heard of it before. As the romance fanatic I am, I immediately started reading and two days later, I finished all 170 chapters. To say this manga had me hooked would be an understatement. Which is really weird because one of this manga's main themes is baseball. I have no fucking clue how to play baseball. So obviously I had to go out and learn. But how? The way I saw it, I had two options. Either I went out and physically played some baseball to eventually learn the sport, or I watched Little Busters. I am a loser, thank you for noticing. Speaking of being a loser, yes, I, I did choose to watch Little Busters. I don't want to go outside. But after the first two episodes, completely lacking in baseball, I decided I guess I just have to go out after all. Upon arriving at the store, I remembered the fact that I live in the great country of Sweden, known for IKEA and Bridgeman. What a fucking name! And in this country, we don't really have baseball. We have this dumbed-down bitch boy version that's called Burnball, which is basically baseball but cut in half. It removes the role of a pitcher, which is literally half of what baseball is. The scoring system is also really weird, but I'm not trying to get into all that right now. This video is already long enough. Point is, I cannot find the proper equipment for practicing baseball. But Cross Game is a story about a pitcher and not a striker, which means all I really need is a baseball. But upon not being able to even find a fucking baseball, we will have to make do with this tennis ball. I want it to be known that since I get about $3 a video, buying this tennis ball has put me in the red, and I'm going to need you guys to like and subscribe so I don't have to file for bankruptcy, please. With all that out of the way, me and our main character Ko Kitamura can finally start both our journeys into baseball. Turns out this shit is harder than I thought. Let me set the scene. Our main character, Ko, lives alone with his dad, who runs a sporting goods store. Ko helps with deliveries and such in exchange for a higher allowance. Matter of fact, there he is on one right now. We meet a bunch of characters that I will briefly mention here. First we got Aoba Tsukishima, Momiji Tsukishima, Ishijo Tsukishima, and last but not least, Wakabe Tsukishima. They're all sisters and part of the same family. Which is why they have the same last name, I don't know why I had to write that, I don't know why I felt the need to clarify, but whatever. They're also next door neighbors to Ko, and they own a batting center, which is pretty similar to a sporting goods store, I think. Anyway, for now I want you to pay attention to Wakaba, as she and Ko have a kind of a bang fan going on. They're basically dating, but not really, because for some reason they just insist on being complicated like that, but I guess that's just how kids are. As I was out there throwing my balls over and over again, for some reason some guy just showed up and caught one of them. He asked me why I was hanging out with his crush. I looked to the side and there she stood. I thought I was here alone. You're never alone. 
Oh, is that so? Cole manages to get away from the group of the school top fighters that want to whoop his ass for being a woman magnet and instead he just decides to play some baseball so that the bullies can't get to him. The issue being that he can't really play baseball. But to be fair, he has been swinging in the batting cages since he was free at the 100 km per hour range. And look at that, that ball seems to be just about that range. If I put my mind to it, maybe I could really manage to do just about anything. Wakabe and Aoba are a very tight-knit pair of sisters, and since Wakabe is basically dating Ko, the three of them stick around each other a lot. Here's a triangle shot to make your life easier. Ko and Wakaba are obviously in love with each other. Wakabe loves Aoba and Aoba loves her back. In a sister way, in a sister way. I know I made a video about searchers, but trust me, this is this is not that type of video. If if you search my name in the YouTube search bar, it autocorrects to love their citrus. This is not the type of man I wanna be known as. Okay, I don't I don't have a thing for incest. I I, I don't I don't I promise. Okay. Moving on, as I said, Ko and Aoba have a kind of shaky relationship with each other. It's kind of like a silly rival type of thing, you know? They're really close, all three of them, even though Ko and Aoba argue all the time. It's a really sweet and innocent relationship between three kids who care about each other really deeply. Little did they know, these good times wouldn't last forever. My favorite shonen manga is Undead Unlock, which isn't really saying much actually since I'm not a fan of shonen and thus haven't read much of it, but this is completely off topic. My point is, there's this point in this manga where the current villain is the old sensei of one of the main characters. The reason he's a villain is because in the search of making his people as strong as possible, he has completely dismissed the value of human life. This causes him to try to kill everyone this pupil of his loves, because the first for revenge this trauma brings will drive him to work harder. And in a way, he's actually right. These claims of his are based completely on experience. Considering the reason the character is currently as strong as he is, is because he went through trauma in the past, caused by his sensei. Pain can be used to push you forward. Now this doesn't mean it should be used like that, but it's important to acknowledge the fact that it does. As we move on. The Incident We now present our 5 minute news bulletin. Water accidents are on the rise around the country. A girl who drowned attending a swimming school in Minagawa Valley was pronounced legally dead late last night at a nearby hospital. The deceased was Senkawa Kita Elementary School 5th grader student Wakaba Tsukushima, age 11. An unchanging facial expression, as if each drawing was just copy pasted over and over again. His face didn't change from this neutral expression. No joy, no sadness, just blank. Blank like a canvas ready to be covered in paint. His face is blank as if waiting for someone to come and tell him how his face is supposed to look like. What expression are you supposed to make in a situation like this? Everything moves so fast it just doesn't feel real. It feels like just yesterday she sat next to me. What am I supposed to do now? Is what Ko asks a random man at the festival he was supposed to be at with Wakaba. Just walking around town aimlessly trying to figure it out, trying to figure out where life goes from here. He arrives at the top fighter in the school, the same one wanting to beat his ass earlier. With his hands in prayer and his head hanging low, he's crying. He was in love with Wakaba, just like Ko was. He feels the pain Ko is feeling. Whether they're just similar or whether they're the exact same is entirely unimportant. The point is, he knows what to do with it. It's so simple. I just have to cry. Finally, we're at chapter 1 of the manga. A good 1.5 thousand words into the script. Ko is a lot older now, and a lot hornier, apparently. 
And then in comes this guy who's just insists he's important to the story and should be introduced to the viewer. But Code decides against it and so shall I. He will be called this guy for the extent of the video. And if that becomes confusing later on, it shouldn't be as long as you're watching the video and not listening to it in the background as he'll be on screen. So you better make sure you're paying attention, pay, pay attention, pay attention. Pay attention. Now to introduce you to the actual important characters. Aoba, Wakaba's sister who I've mentioned before, but now you gotta pay extra attention to her as she's really important from now on. She's a pitcher. Basically, she throws the ball towards the batter who tries to hit it. Sadly, she's a girl. I, and I'm not being sexist here. The, it just means that she can't play in actual matches. They'd come to me talking baseball this, baseball that. Baseball? I haven't played that in years, you know? That's what I'd tell them. And then they'd ask me, well, if you haven't played baseball in years... How can you throw like that? And, you know, I just say, well. <laughs> so, you know, I just say, well. 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 You no, know, it's to the point where they got mad. You know, they they got mad and they went like, "Oh, how can you throw like that and not join the fucking baseball team?" Well, I never really had any real interest in baseball. <laughs> I mean, come on, I just did this shit for a fucking video. As Ko is out in the woods getting trained by his past love rival, A.K.A. the ex best fighter in the school, who I will now reveal the name of, as he is very important to the story. Akashi is the name and the baseball is the game. I don't know why I introduced that name so awkwardly, but we will keep going. Anyway, while Akashi and Ko are training in the woods, Akashi tells Ko about the last dream that Wakabe told him about. The day before she left to go to her training camp where she would eventually meet her end. In this dream of hers, Ko and Akashi were standing on the field of the Koshin. Akashi as the catcher and Ko as the pitcher. The Koshin is this tournament that is basically the goal of all high school baseball teams in Japan. It's a huge tournament and just qualifying for it requires you to be the winner of one of many tournaments that are held to see who has the skills to qualify. Basically it's a big fucking deal. This has been Akashi's motivation to do baseball all these years. He had a passing, mostly casual interest in it, but after hearing Wakaba's dream, he sought out to make it a reality. And Ko obviously can't let her down either, can he? We have just now established the plot and set up for the story. Every legend needs his sad backstory after all. I spoke about how Wakabe, Ko, and Aoba were always together as kids, but that Ko and Aoba were always fighting. So now that Wakaba is gone, how has their relationship ended up now? Well, I think this relationship right here is, and I don't put this lightly, the strongest plot point of the manga. And instead of telling you why, I'm just gonna show you. Down to the way they pitch, they're fundamentally the same. Since they were kids, they've always been alike, birds of a feather. Everyone, and I mean every single motherfucker in this manga, recognizes how similar these people are. Except for the people in question. They'll never see it. They'll never admit to how similar they really are. But it's such an indisputable fact. So why then can't they get along? Well, it's simple. It's because of how similar they are. If you ask Aoba what's so good about her, she won't be able to give you a good answer. Depending on where we are in the story, she might say that she's a pretty good pitcher, but apart from that, she doesn't see the appeal. When Ko gets asked what Wakaba saw in him, he always answers the same. I don't know. Both of these guys do not understand how great they really are. So when you show them a person who's extremely similar to them, then of course they won't be able to tell you what the appeal is. 
Of course, they'll say things like, I hate him, because after all, they're just so similar. If you hate yourself, putting your personality upon another person won't make you hate yourself less. This relationship is the best part of cross game, because this relationship is cross game. The actual goal is to get to the quotient, to fulfill Wakaba's last dream. But what we're actually watching is not just Ko practicing for 170 chapters, because that would just be boring. Most of all, we see as Ko and Oba's relationship evolve over the span of the manga, as they both learn more about themselves and slowly accept who they are. They also become able to accept each other, what all culminates in... <laughs> you really thought I was gonna spoil how it ends now? No, 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 no. I'm a fully-fledged YouTube partner now, which means I have to resort to tactics like telling you to watch to the end of the video to find out the answer. I'm actually just doing this so I can end the video in a climactic and dramatic way, but shh, I like pretending I get paid enough to be a sellout. Introducing the rival team. It consists of Asuma. Yeah, he's like the only one you really need to pay attention to. All the rest of the team are unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Basically, these guys are bad news because their coach is bad news. He's very reminiscent of the teacher from Whiplash, if you've ever seen that movie. They follow the mindset that training that borders torture is the only way to move forwards. They try to create fear in their teams to push their members of it, to push themselves in fear of the consequences that might follow if they don't. They think this is the way to progress, but that's far from the truth. And Ko's team is here to show them that, with two games of baseball. Now, before we get into the matches, I think I should probably give a brief explanation of how you play baseball for the ones that, just like me before I read this, have no clue how this shit works. So basically, baseball is split into two parts, attacking and defending. When attacking, you have to hit the baseball the pitcher throws in a way that will buy you enough time to run as far along as you can around the arena. What you're trying to buy time for is the ball being picked up and then passed to the person standing at the base you're about to run to. If they catch the ball and then touch you with it before you can reach the base, then you're out. This arena contains four bases, and after you've run past all of them, you score one point, or as they're called in baseball, one run. If you buy enough time for you to run around the whole field in one go, it's called a home run. And it is simply very swag. It doesn't give you any bonus points or anything, it's just very cool. Everyone in the team gets a chance to be the batter who's responsible of hitting the baseball. You get three strikes until you're out, and you get a strike when you miss the ball. There's also this thing called a ball which is a little more complicated to explain. You see, there's this thing called a strike zone, and if the pitcher throws the ball outside the strike zone and the batter doesn't swing at it, the batter gets a ball. If you get four balls, you get a free pass to the first base. This rule is often used against good batters, who are very likely to hit the ball and far. This is called a walk, and you do it by intentionally throwing outside of the strike zone so that the batter gets enough balls to give him first base. This is a smart move since you're basically just minimizing the possible damage, but it's also for PUSSIES! Now let's say you get to one of these bases. Well, what happens to you then? Well, you have to rely on the rest of your team to get some nice hits, as you can now only wait until the current batter buys you a good opportunity to run. Now defense is way easier of a position to explain, as all they have to do really is throw the ball and then catch it. Basically. The defender has a set pitcher who throws the balls towards the batter, and tries to make it hard for him to hit it. If the batter does hit it, then the rest of the team are spread out and ready to catch the ball, and if they manage to catch it without it touching the ground first, then it's an instant out for the batter. But the runners who were on base can still run, but it will be very hard as you're only one good pass away from being outed. Now if one of the fielders don't catch the ball without it touching the ground, they can still pick it up from the ground and then pass it so you can get it out. Then you will also have the batter running, so you definitely want to try to catch the ball if you can. Instead of using time to determine baseball games like most sports, they're instead split into innings that can run for god knows too long, and are split into two parts, the top part and the bottom part. Basically, these parts are just to switch which team is on the attacking side and which team is on the D. 
as both teams get a turn to play both positions every inning. Innings switch between bottom and top half after all the batters of a team has gotten a chance to swing. A baseball game has 9 innings in it and they run very long, especially if the teams are tied at the end of the ninth inning, in which the game goes into extra innings, which will run until one of the teams win. It is also fairly common that the bottom of the ninth inning doesn't get played at all. There's a few reasons for this, but they all come down to the bottom of the ninth inning not being able to change anything, so they just don't play it. Alright, I think that's about it. There's details and extra rules and shit that I skipped, but man, that explanation ran for 500 plus words, which is more than half of some of my fucking video scripts, so I just wanna move on. Now that I have that out of the way, it's time to play some fucking baseball. Play ball! Out! Out! Home run! After the first inning going 0-0, which is impressive in its own right as their opponents are heavy favorites to win, they go 3-1, which is insane, as Coe scores a home run which gives him and two of his teammates on base all a run for 3 points in total. Asama retaliates with his own home run, but as there were no runs on field, he only scores 1 point. But it goes downhill from here, sadly. Not a fast fall, but a sure one. As the opposing team scores 3 runs by the 5th inning, yet Ko's team has stayed at the same 3 points Ko got from his home run. Something about Ko becomes very noticeable. He's already dead tired. This is Ko's first time pitching in an actual game. And as he is looking like this in the 5th inning, it's clear he doesn't have the stamina for this. He started out golden, but as the game has gone on, his pitching has gotten worse and worse. He makes a quick decision to abandon his pitch control and just focus on his speed, as he thinks focusing on both isn't a reasonable ask for him as he is. And it pays off. He manages to hold him down for an inning, but then the next inning it's time for Asuma yet again. And then Asuma hits his third home run in a row. But then again, this is Ko's first time ever pitching in a real game. You know, so go easy on him. But even though, even though that is the case, even though this is his first time ever pitching, what if he won? It's the ninth inning, the score is 5-3, to three, after one of Ko's teammate gets him in the perfect setup where he only needs one base run to tie up the game. The game is tied, going into the bottom of the ninth, and as Asuma fucking strikes out, maybe, maybe they have a chance. The ego of striking out Asuma got to his head, and he lost immediately afterwards. This story doesn't start with a triumphant win, but it also doesn't start with a crushing loss. It starts with the underdogs putting up a damn good fight against a team that's meant to be absolutely crushing them. This match really should not have gone to the bottom of the ninth inning to begin with, but it did. This game was a large blow to the pride that the opposing team's coach held as they were the heavy favorites to win. It was never meant to be close, but it was. This match sets Ko up perfectly. This being his very first game ever pitching, he has noticeable flaws to work out, but even so, he was the MVP by far. And this foreshadows the monster this boy can grow into. Our rival team, or precisely Asuma, is asking where the prefab team is, which is the team of our boy Koki Demura by the way. He wonders where they are since he hasn't seen them around lately. Alba tells him they're secretly training their asses off somewhere hidden. She doesn't actually believe this herself, but this is what she was told to say, so it's what she'll say. Later she found out that it wasn't a lie, and the team really are training in secret. Oba goes out to find them both because she still doesn't quite believe it and Ko also has some clothes he needs delivered to him. As she finally arrives after getting lost, she immediately goes to sleep. And as she wakes up, she's surprised by how quiet it is. She asks the manager if everyone is still sleeping and she says that they are. But they'll probably wake up soon. Wait. Wake back up? 
There they all are laying, fully dressed on the ground, knocked out before the coach wakes them up saying that their break is now over. And immediately, they're back to it. But Ko is nowhere to be found. Well, that's because while they were all taking a break, he kept running. This is our team. The prefabs who are dead set on defeating their rivals in a rematch. And most motivated of all is everyone's idol, Ko Kitamura. Moments like these in the story make me think back on the words of Wakaba. If Ko puts his mind to it, he could be the best pitcher in Japan. And what we have here is proof of that. Maybe this team of nobodies have the biggest chance of them all to really become something extraordinary. The thing is, losing a baseball game is a loss, of course. But at the same time, it's also a win. I mean, think about it. You get the experience of having played the match, and you get to face a team that were better than you. And that can help you see the flaws in how you play, which will in turn make you a better player in the end. You can get better. You can get stronger. And in the next match, you can hit them back even harder than you ever could before. My point here is, losing a baseball game is never really a lot. They're shutting down the prefab team. The school wants to completely focus on the varsity team, aka our rivals. But the prefabs aren't going down without a fight, no, 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 no. So they challenge their rivals to another game, but a game with stakes. A game with the coaches' jobs on the line. The losing team gets removed from the school. The rival coach is a very, very prideful man, as we've seen over and over again in this manga. So of course he said yes, even though he really wins nothing out of it. Now, now it's really on. Now, it's all or nothing. To the coach's dismay, Asuma says he won't play in the game going as far as to punch a fucking metal pole to injure himself so he can't play right in front of the coach like bro i don't think this guy could have forced you to play regardless there was absolutely no need for you to be this dramatic but then again the coach does the exact same thing right after Osma leaves so like i what the fuck is wrong with you people is this how japanese people act hello <laughs> Anyway, Asuma is refusing to play because he wants to see if the team is actually good or if he was just hard carrying. Which is fair, honestly. He did score three home runs in the last episode of Dragon Ball Z. That was a weird joke, but I'm keeping it in. Now with the stakes and the roster is set, it's time to... Oh wait, actually, speaking of rosters, our beautiful prefab team now has Aoba playing for us this game. Since it's an unofficial game and they were missing one player. Although Ko is still playing pitcher despite that kind of being Aoba's thing, and the reason why will become very apparent. Anyway, now it's finally time to play ball! I've gone pretty good, huh? <laughs> it's all about hard work. You gotta put in that hard work if you wanna be the best. Why do I wanna be the best? <laughs> well, that's a long story. A story as old as time, some would say. A story about a stupid boy and an amazing girl that was simply way better than he ever was. Now, I won't bore you with that long tale. <laughs> the point is, she gave me the strength. The strength that I needed to triumph. Before the match even starts, the rival coach tries to weasel his way out of the deal making sure the principal didn't actually intend on firing him, even if he did lose. He's scared. This is proof that the last match had an effect on him. The prideful, confident man has been knocked down a notch. He hasn't just randomly had a Persona 5 change of heart, but he has taken the advice of Kendrick Lamar and gotten humble. Well, at least a bit more humble than he was before, but progress is progress. Now, I want it to be known, I won't ever bombard you with references like I just did. Um, I'm sorry, this is not the Mario movie. That's not what I'm here to do. Moving on, the rival coach's attempt to weasel his way out doesn't work. Not because of the principal being an upstanding man who holds his promises, no no no, this guy's a douchebag, do not get it wrong. But the fucking school board chairman pulled up and said, Motherfucker, the deal is on, shut your bitch ass up. 
That's not what he actually said, but something along those lines. This may seem very random to you guys, but it's, it's actually not. He was next to Abba watching the last game and became a bit of a fan of Ko as everyone tends to. So he came to see what the next steps of Ko Kitamura's journey will entail. Three outs. This is how Ko starts. Already a really solid start. But that's just it. He's just getting started. The prefabs played six practice games in preparation for this game against some of the strongest teams they could find. I'm talking schools that have all reached within the quarterfinals of the Koshin. Which may I remind you, just getting to the Koshin is the entire goal of the story. Let alone actually getting to the quarterfinals. And in those six games, Ko only let one run pass in the last three innings. Ko's entire game plan works around his lack of stamina by focusing on pitching his hardest when it truly matters. Which means he's out there scoring outs left and right right now, not letting a single run pass from the varsity team without even pitching his best. This is a different beast from last match. It's the sixth inning, still zeros across the board. The seventh inning starts and we're now in coast domain. Meanwhile, the rival team's pitcher is said to be losing his touch. And this allows Aoba to get the first run of the match. And as Cole makes sure the rival's 8th inning ends with a 0, the prefab scored the second run of the match. And as the ninth inning comes around, Ko stands like an immovable wall, not letting their enemy score a single run all game. And just like that, we get a 2-0 conclusion, with the ninth inning not even being played. A complete wash. And after that, Asuma joins the party. After the varsity team got their assets handed to them by the prefabs, Asuma decided to join the prefabs, as he said he wanted to be in the team with the highest chance to get him to the Koshan. And since Ko is in this team, it's obviously the best one. I love you, Ko. Mwah, mwah, mwah. He also moved into Ko's house since he used to live in the boys' dorm that ceased to exist when everyone from the baseball team left. For some reason. Now that Asma lives with Ko, we get to see a lot more of him, and mostly how he is outside of when he's playing baseball. Which is really interesting, especially when he's dropping hints to deeper lore like this moment here where he yells at kids playing on the stairs. And then he starts brooding as he goes, That's fine, as long as they're hurting themselves. And here, it's clear the author wants you to be like, Ooh, what could that mean? But like, it's the easiest mystery ever. This is Asma's brother. He used to be a baseball professional until he hurt his leg in some kind of accident and couldn't play anymore. And now here's Asuma talking about hurting others by playing on the stairs. I wonder what that could possibly mean. I feel like this is so obvious I don't even have to spell it out for you guys. You got this. I, I promise. I, I believe in you guys. You, you can figure this one out. I bring this up to be transparent as I could very easily stand up here and bring up all the positives of the story and make it seem like a masterpiece. Matter of fact, that was literally what my very first video was. I spent this entire video of speaking of SAO, or Sword Art Online, but I omit everything that was bad about it, and just bring up the positives. And if you had never watched the show, I bet you would be none the wiser to my trickery. Except for the fact that I peel back the curtain in the end of the video, but you get the point. There are no perfect stories, and as I was writing the script, I got really self-conscious about whether or not these videos I wrote were actually a good thing. Whether I was accidentally taking away eyes from the media I wanted to promote by acting as a replacement for it in a way. I know I'm guilty of watching videos about stories instead of actually reading them, and I bet you are too. I bet most of you watching this video may have never even heard of Crossgame, or read it, and never will. And I don't want this video or any of my videos to be a reason for people not checking out these amazing stories. The reason I bring this seemingly random worry of mine up in this video in particular is because this video cuts out so fucking much of Cross Game. You see, Cross Game isn't really a story about baseball as much as I'm making it out to be. I'm really only portraying one side of Cross Game so that I can show the narrative that I personally want the video to have. The narrative that the baseball in cross game is interesting even if you don't care about baseball. 
But even if you disagree with me and think the baseball in this manga still sounds boring, I'd still recommend you this manga, as it's just that good. Sorry, that became a bit of a rant. Let me just uh, spam a bunch of sumo memes to get your attention back, and we can now move on. I say that, but after the rematch, there's a whole 20 chapters of what this manga is really about, which is the daily lives of those kids. But after those chapters that I very conveniently skip over, it is now time for the regional preliminaries, aka the tournament to decide what team goes to the Koshen. This is the big tournament that Ko has to win to achieve his goal of standing in the Koshen arena. <clears throat> In baseball, information is very important, so the person that comes in with the most information is already before the game even starts at an advantage. To give you an example, as I have been throwing this ball, this entire video, not actually this ball, but you get my point. Since I've been throwing a ball this entire video, my weakness would obviously be either catching or batting, right? And this means that I could have a higher chance of, let's say, dropping the ball. The enemy team started this match off already with a big advantage, being the fact that they had information. A prefab team who aren't actually prefabs anymore, but I'll keep calling them that for simplicity's sake. Our prefabs have been spied on. The enemy team have been sending people to spy and write down the weaknesses of our squad, and they have not done the same. Immediately meaning this game is slanted. And if that wasn't enough, Ko fumbles not one, but two easy catches. On top of another teammate picking up what would have been a foul ball. Which basically means the ball wouldn't have counted. We're off to a rocky start. And what this means is that they somehow even found a way to deal with Ko. Bunts are a tactic in baseball in which you don't swing at the ball, but instead just hold it horizontally. Meaning, instead of having to time your hit perfectly to collide with the ball, you just have to hold it in place as if it's a small wall in front of where the ball is going. This will obviously mean the ball won't fly off with nearly as much force as if you swung it, but to someone like Ko who doesn't have much practice catching a bunt ball, they can turn into a lethal strategy which is exactly what we see at play here. Now, as a tall ass man approaches the batting zone, Ko throws the ball so off the catcher doesn't even catch it. And when this happens, it means the people on base are free to run. Which ends up in the rival team getting a run as they had a runner on third base. Basically, this is an idiotic move by an idiotic boy. But from here on, it's time to be for real. And with that, I mean keep the score at zero for the next five innings. But inning six, we finally score two runs. And not through any real strategy or the opponent slipping up or anything like that. Just by being so good at baseball that even when your opponents know your weakness, you're good enough to perform through it. Well, that's a lie. In reality, they're actually so stupid they don't even realize the enemy knows their weaknesses. They're playing through it because to them, this is just a normal game. They don't feel the pressure on their shoulders of being down at all. Which brings the score from them being one down all the way to the fifth inning to the score standing at an impressive 7-1 by the eighth inning. And I, I just want to show you these pages in their entirety because they just show off Asuma as a character so well. Looks like you'll finally get a chance to swing the bat <laughs> with the score like this. Where would you like it? Huh? To right, left, or center? Mm, let's try it center. This is Asuma. The subtle cockiness followed by a run with absolutely no swagger. This guy knows he's him, but he doesn't care to brag about it. He lets his results speak for him. We follow this up by Ko stating he will completely strike them out this last inning. And of course he delivers on this promise, as he ends the game screaming his achievement out for the world to hear. With the rival coach describing him as a pitcher you only see once every 10 years. Ko and Azuma are complete opposites personality wise. But they hold one thing in common. They play a damn good game of baseball. 150 kilometers an hour. Pretty fast, huh? <laughs> you see, I have trained this hand to near perfection. This does mean that jacking off has become a dangerous sport, but I think it's worth it. <laughs>
what would perfection be you're asking me well wouldn't it be cool if i could throw 160 as our next match in the tournament quickly approaches us we'll see if maybe play ball this team we're going up against now has some heavy hitters for sure we have not one but two famous batters Oh wait, I'm getting some information saying there's only one famous batter? Well then who's this guy? You see, this team has this guy who's their star batter and has been for a while now. He's very looked up to in the public eye and easily seen as the MVP of the team. But they're actually hiding the real best batter. Since their current pseudo one is an attention whore who'd rather die than give up the attention. Yes, that's really the only reason. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's time to play some baseball. And just like that, our two best boys start this game off right. Kona letting the rival batters touch the ball and then Asuma hitting a home run. I couldn't find a way to smoothly write this in, but I just want to show you the complimentary artwork for this chapter. You see, it's funny because she's actually really bad at cooking. Now, at the bottom of the second inning, one point down, it's time for Rawls to bring out their star batter. The crowd cheering as he enters the batter's box but he's going against Ko here. Will he really be able to deliver what the crowd wants from him? Ball! Come on, don't be scared. Strike! Ball! Strike! He's one strike away from striking out. As a star batter, he just can't let that happen. But then Ko changes up his previous pattern, going for the strikeout which catches the batter by surprise, but in desperation he manages to get a flimsy hit on the ball, preventing his strikeout but still leading from disappointment from the crowd that clearly expected nothing less than a home run from our star. As Cole continues to strike out the rest of their team, their star is left stranded on base. This is a team with notoriety, a team that's already well known for knowing what the fuck they're doing here. Yet they're losing pretty hard so far to a team they didn't even consider a big enough threat to even make a plan for. Why is that? Well that's simple. They're not using their best player. Their secret best player isn't allowed to play in this match strictly because their current star player wants the attention. And his pride will be his undoing. And the batter isn't the only one who's overconfident in this team. As Asuma steps up to plate yet again in the third inning, it would only make sense to walk him since he hit a home run last time he batted. But no, this pitcher is the ace pitcher and he has to show off. So he tries to hit Asuma with a gross curveball with enough curve to maybe even hit him. But Asuma being Asuma, he hits this ball, almost fucking killing the pitcher in the process. You know damn well this man saw his life flashing before his eyes here. Enough sucking Asuma's dick. It's time to look at Ko, who just hit 10 fucking strikeouts. Like damn, this team has two seemingly unstoppable demons in it. They might just be able to go all the way. And now it's already time to return to sucking Asuma's dick, who is so much of a threat the pitcher is literally trying to fucking hit him with the ball now. Asuma fucking predicts this and dodges and Jesus Christ, give me a moment, this video is probably making me look like a baseball mega fan, but trust me. I didn't even know how to fucking play this sport when we started this, and you will also never catch me actually watching baseball, probably not playing it either, cause as I said, I live in Sweden, that's not really a thing here. I really have no special feelings for this shit. As I've told you before, I never did it because I was a fan of baseball or anything, I just had a goal I really, really needed to accomplish. And it just so happens to be baseball related. As the H pitcher throws Asuma three balls, he gets yelled at to not be a coward. Yet again, the rival's pride as a team fucks them. Asuma hits the ball. It's not the best hit and the outfielders easily catch it after a bounce. The issue being the fact that he caught it using his free hand. That being the hand not weighing the fucking glove. He drops the ball as he has now broken his finger. Osma doesn't end up being able to score a run from this, but just, wow. To think this man's finger could have been saved if their pride was in their downfall, to this degree. But this injury may be a blessing in disguise, as they now need a replacement player to cover for the injured man. Which brings us to... Mishima. 
the real star of the team. He comes in being the first batter to swing in the seventh inning and home run. Immediately, Mishima comes off with a bang, tying the game up. Ko tries to apologize for throwing badly, but Ozma ensures him that he didn't throw any worse than he has all game. This guy is just in a league above the rest of the team. But Asuma being Asuma, he obviously can't just let this guy out of China. And with this guy on second base, Asuma is set up to make a great play. And the rival team knows this, so they switch pitchers in an attempt to not let Asuma get what he wants. And as the catcher stands up reaching his hand out completely out of the strike zone, it becomes clear what kind of pitcher they switch into. One that doesn't have a fucking ego problem. <laughs> He walks Asuma, and then he takes the other batters out with no problem. The game is tied at the bottom of the ninth inning, and with Mishima batting this inning, things are looking scary. And batting fourth, here he comes. Mishima, with one runner on first base, who Cole walked, seemingly to prepare for this very man. Cole surprisingly starts it off with a strike. A strike that very well could have been the end of the game. Cole isn't here to be a coward. He's not interested in walking any good batter he comes across. Ko is only interested in being good enough to hold even the best batters down. The Kohen. It's no joke, you know? It is the dream of every Japanese high school baseball team. And to get into it, to even have a chance at getting into it, you need to be really good. And I mean really fucking good. So I couldn't just be happy with walks and you know walking all of the best batters that i come across no 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 i had to be the best goddamn pitcher that i could ko leads the strike up with a ball and then he throws a ball that leads to a hit just for it to be a foul mishima is sweating but ko is playing <laughs> he catches it Ko throws the ball, Mishima hits it, and it returns right back to Ko's glove. But as the dumbass that he is, Ko drops the ball right after, which gives the enemy team second base. Luckily, Ko managed to strike out the rest of the batters and close out the ninth inning on a tie, which brings us to the extra innings. We started off with Ko batting, as to remind us the fact that this man is more than just a pitcher. He used to have the home run record in the batting cage after all. I say this, but in reality, the bat fucking flies out of his hand. But he saves it with a nice drag bunt, which gives him first base. Also, a quick break from this match to show you Alba having incredible confidence in Ko. I know, I know I said I would focus on the baseball in this video, but this is too cute not to include, okay? You forget I'm a Romex mega fan, okay? I, I need to include this. And you know, maybe this has more to do with the video than you think. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Now despite the confidence Aoba just placed in Ko, he lets off a hit. A hit that leads all the way to second base. It's all riding on this next hit from the opponent's pitcher. Since, as we already know, Ko will never go for a walk in a situation this dire. Strike! Strike! Strike. Foul ball! Ko is sweating. Okay, 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 okay. You remember when he dropped the bat? Well, let's just say the hit he caught from Mishima left his hand worse off than it was beforehand. As he throws his next pitch, he thinks to himself, If I get another chance to rest on the bench, I'll be perfect. But he hits it. And it goes straight to Ko. But it goes right over his glove. They lose the game, 2-1. Losing is obviously never fun, but at the end of the day, it's not what really matters. What really matters is whether or not you can bounce back from that loss. And if so, how hard will you do it? It is now summer vacation. And as a new neighbor recently just moved in, it will certainly be f Wait a minute. Doesn't that kind of look like...
skipping past the summer vacation, it is now time for the tournament yet again. Our duo of demons now having entered their third and final year of high school. It's their last chance. And hey, there's that dickhead coach from a while back in the video. Hope you guys remember him. I, I could give him a name, but assuming you're not playing this video, I've spent hours editing in the background, you could just use your eyes to perceive exactly who I'm talking about. Now, our team isn't actually going to be facing him right now. But he is in the tournament, so just remember him in case he wins his matches. I'm not saying he will or anything. He, he, he might not. Um, but he's in the tournament. Now, before we get into the match, I want you to make note of this deal that Ko makes with Oba. If he gets double-digit strikeouts, then they will not go on a date. Just um, um, remember that, because it will be on the test. I also want to note that Awesome is kind of into Alba at this point. Um, yeah, okay. Now it's time to play the- Oop, wait, no, the offer skipped this game, actually, as it got stopped at five innings, because the opponents were getting too crushed? Jesus, well, um... Somehow, Ko managed to get those double-digit strikeouts in just the five innings. So, um, no, no date. Um, now, why did I ask you to remember this? Well, you'd get it if you read the fucking manga, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fuck you. Now, moving on to another thing I asked you guys to remember. The evil coach. Have you guys ever watched Whiplash? You know what? Instead of that, have you guys ever watched a Spider-Man movie? You know, maybe the newest one? Maybe you've watched any superhero movie at all? My point is, this guy is a villain. I know you may not believe me, as he isn't on the acclaimed villain wiki, but that's probably because the only two cross-game fans in existence are me and this one commenter with the strange name. But he is a villain. And as seen in Whiplash or just any Spider-Man movie, actually any superhero movie ever, the villains never win. And this story isn't any different, as yet again this man is bested by a no-name school that he didn't think was worth throwing his best players at. Which means we won't be seeing him anymore. Hooray. Now, time for me to go off the topic of baseball once again to talk about my favorite two losers. I want it to be known I purposely skipped rereading the big stretches of Slice of Life in this manga just so I can avoid making this video about anything that isn't baseball, but I will simply tell myself this is important to include and write it in. And you dear viewer will be none the wiser. Shit, I wasn't supposed to include that in the video, fuck. Anyway, Oba walks up to Ko and asks him what her good points are. He immediately starts listing things that make her good at baseball. When Oba asked him to name things outside of baseball, he simply says, There are things you miss by being too close. She replies, Even though you see my bad parts just fine? Cole simply says that it must be so. And then he throws a pitch. And now Oba replies telling him, Nice pitch. This moment is where I really fell in love with these characters. For like um, the millionth time. I, I swear, there's so many of these moments, but for the sake of the video, this is the moment that Walter White turned into Heisenberg. <laughs> these characters that are just so incredibly similar, they can't even see the good in each other simply because they can't see the good in themselves. It's so good. It's so good. I've already talked about this and I will talk about it again. It's just so good, okay? I had to get that off my chest. Now, now we can move on, okay? <laughs> Alright, now it's finally time to give you context for this match. Sorry for blue balling you guys, but this is important, I promise. You see this man here? This is Miki. He was a part of Asuma's old team with the evil coach. He and Asuma were the two star players of that team. But Miki transferred before the rematch because he wanted to be in a team of people that actually loved baseball. Basically, he didn't like this dickhead of a coach, which, fair enough. Mickey transferred and whipped his current team into shape, and now they're here standing in front of our protagonists. Mickey went from transferring to a team exclusively because Asuma was in it, to standing in his way. I wonder how this game will go. I actually know how it will go, but... P fucking PLAY BALL! This match starts off like always, with Cole just <laughs> pitching amazingly. But what I really want to speak about is the enemy's pitcher, aka Mickey. His strategy is very different, 
Instead of throwing to strike out every batter, he purposely lets some player on bases, which we can see by him allowing a runner on second and first. And then after he's put himself in this scary position, he makes sure nobody can move these runners, leaving them stranded on base, which grants a morale boost for his team and a downgrade of morale to the opponents. As he, um, for lack of a better comparison, edges them and... You know what? I could have definitely come up with a better comparison than that. As I was saying, he, he edges them and then leaves them with blue balls. Why did I write this? Why did I... Uh. Anyway, the point is, the fact that this man gives the impression that he has you right where he wants you is going after the mental. And that's exactly what he wants. But Ko is doing the same. As he hasn't let off a hit in all 7 innings that have been played so far. Ko isn't doing any complicated mind games like Mickey. He's just throwing some fucking amazing pitches, cause that, that's just what he does. But it destroys the enemy team's mental all the same. The bottom of 8th. It's time for the second years of the team to swing. The second years that have been coached by Oba. The second years that have a woman sitting on bench they need to impress. And as Mickey keeps doing what he does best and putting runners on both second and first base, one of the second year steps up to bat, muttering under his breath, swing through. With such force he falls over, he hits the ball. Home run. Turning the score to 8-0 in the 8th inning. And I won't pretend like the opponents managed to perform some miracle and come back. The game ends with their loss, but they do manage to get a run since Ko was probably playing sloppy thinking he already had it in the bag. The bastard. The next game is another skipper as it was a complete wash yet again. But an important thing was said here. Is it just me or does this fastball seem to get faster with every game we play? Unfortunately, it's not just you. That's right, his fastball keeps getting faster and faster and faster for each game. And last time we checked, it was sitting at 150 kilometers per hour. This means maybe, just maybe, he can hit 160. After another game win, this seems like it just might be the case. As we found out, Ko is now throwing 156 kilometers an hour. Editor, put in the FNAF 6 cm shearing sound. Now sorry to interrupt your nice times, but I mentioned a certain girl that moved in recently and became neighbors with Ko. The girl that looks just like Wakaba. Well, there's a whole thing with Ko becoming closer to her and weighing his options of whether to date her or not, you know, classic shit. But the reason I'm mentioning her has nothing to do with that, since this is a video about baseball after all. Right, guys? Um, but the thing is, she hasn't come to any of the recent games, despite saying she'd love to. This was suspicious enough for people to start worrying. I mean, she does look like Wakaba, so what if she meets the same fate? This worry seems far-fetched, but it started to become a lot realer when they find out she's actually in the hospital. I know you've probably done a presentation in front of your class once or twice before. And if you have done so, you've probably fumbled over your words or forgotten what to say next. You know, things in that vein. Basically, it comes down to mistakes that you usually wouldn't make. But standing there in front of everyone, the pressure is all on you. You know, it's a, it's a scary thing. It is. I, I get it. It's a scary thing standing there in front of everyone. Because we're, we're all human. We're all human. And humans are very emotional creatures. You can be the greatest player of all time. But if you're in the middle of a game and you just found out your mom passed away. It's going to affect your game. It's going to show on how you play. The level that you play at. It could even be your mom being hospitalized. Let's say your friend's getting hospitalized. Someone someone you've known for less than a year even. It'll show. It'll show on your performance. Emotions, they affect us this deeply. 
Trust me. Now, you may be thinking I was talking about Kitamura when I said all that, but I actually wasn't. Do you remember way back in the video I introduced the catcher of our team Akachi, the guy who was first introduced as a bully? Well, anyway, he's a pretty emotional guy, so this shit hit him hard. He's the person Ko saw crying when Wakaba died, and he's the first guy you'd see crying if Akana met the same fate. So, his baseball suffered. They suffered from these emotions of worry, and he, the third best player of the team, is now playing sloppily. Luckily, they do manage to squeeze out a 3-1 victory, but the fact still remains, he can't keep going like this. The visit Akane in the hospital. Ko refuses to come with, so it's just Aoba and then Akashi. They make a little small talk that may or may not lead to Aoba figuring some sort of feelings that I don't really know, this isn't baseball after all. But the important moment comes when Akashi asks Akane about the results. And she tells him that they weren't good, and that she might have to operate. And with the finals right around the corner, they're gonna be running it back against that team that took him out the last tournament. Everyone is gonna have to be on their A-game. But can Akashi really play well under these conditions? Well, let's skip the bullshit and just find out with the last game before the finals. So now, play ball! We start the game with a home run from an unimportant side character. After the home run, we see good hit after good hit, but they're all getting caught. And with no runners on base, that just leads to nothing. But batting first in the second inning, we find Akashi. He's standing in the batter's box thinking about Akana thinking about what she said in the hospital, but most importantly, thinking about how he simply can't let her be the reason he plays worse. He hits the ball out of the park. Not only is this a home run, but the ball is fucking gone. Ko feels this energy from Akashi and hits a double. Sadly, this doesn't really lead to much of anything, but it's the, it's the thought that counts. With this, they keep playing cleanly not letting their worries overwhelm them, closing out the game 8-1 in the 8th inning. After this game, Ko goes to finally see Akane. In his words, he pitched perfectly after the second inning and wanted to go brag, which is fair enough as their opponent didn't get to touch the plate after the second inning. Back to the hospital, Ko asks Akane when her surgery is. He called her mom earlier and she lied about her being released in two days and she wasn't a very good liar so Ko immediately knew this must mean Akana is gonna have to operate after all. The day of the finals, she says. The real reason Ko came to visit Akana was so that he could then lie to Akashi about what she said, since Ko is a pretty good liar. Akashi was happy to hear the news and after telling him, Ko asked Aoba to come with him to Wakaba's grave. Ko prays to Wakaba that the game goes well, and that Akane survives her surgery. This is obviously surprising for Oba since she didn't even know about the surgery, but Ko ensures her, and probably himself, that it's not just going to be a success, but a smashing one. Ko and Oba are performing one last pitch check before the game, a check for Aoba's pitching that is. Ko notices how her pitching control is off and asks if there's anything on her mind. She says she talked to Akana last night, but won't say what about. Then she randomly asks, You love Akana, don't you? Yeah. More than Waka? I can't compare it to someone who isn't alive anymore. Okay. More than me. Is it okay if I lie? Sure. We don't get to hear his response. At least, for now. So... We will move on to the long-awaited finals. The nerves are through the roof, more than usual. Not only is the result of the game on Ko's mind, but also the health of Akane. As he sleeps on the bus to the game, Akane is undergoing her surgery. As he steps onto the field, the only thing on his mind is Akane. Will she be fine? He looks around the stands. What's he looking for? He asks for Momiji, Oba's little sister. He wants to know where she is, but why? As she notices him looking over, she flashes a peace sign. Now he can finally focus on the game. Now once and for all, for the final time, it is time to play ball!
The game is against Rio Academy, the team that ended their last tournament run, and then went on to win it all in the Koshen. It's going to be far from an easy match, but the finals shouldn't be anything else. The game starts off with a zero from our gang, but we don't care about that. More importantly, how is Ko's pitching gonna look with all the worrying he's been doing and the lack of sleep holding him back? Well, um, his first pitch is looking very shaky control-wise, with Akashi having to lunge to catch it, but his speed, 156 kilometers an hour. This sets a scary standard, with this giant board telling every single batter on the rival team exactly what kind of pitcher they're gonna be dealing with. His speed is insane, but his control is definitely not what it should be, as he keeps just throwing balls over and over again. But with each throw, he corrects it more and more until those balls turn to strikes. We end the inning at 0-0. This is gonna be a good game, that's for sure. The second inning goes by, and even though Ozma steps up to play, he gets walked, obviously, and the score remains at 0. Ko keeps on pitching as he usually does, but Mishima steps up to play. Things get a little intense. With the performance he put on in the last match, this man is definitely a force to be reckoned with. It starts off with a ball. It was a tough call, so it's hard to know whether Ko was going for a strike or a ball, which means his intentions aren't quite clear, so the next pitch might be a bit harder to hit. He makes contact. But luckily, he settles for a drag bunt. He said he wanted to break up the no-hitter. But it's only the second inning. Why would you worry about a no-hitter in the second inning? That's pretty normal in baseball. Well, with Oba also bringing it up on the stands, it becomes clear. Normally, you wouldn't worry about a no-hitter this early. But this, this isn't a normal game. And this... This is definitely no normal pitcher. Mishima and Aoba both know that with Ko, even a game that should be close can easily turn to a no-hitter. They know Ko is capable of making the seemingly impossible possible. Or, or something like that, I don't know. This is just baseball, I guess. It's, it's probably not that deep. But Jesus Christ, this, <laughs> this manga is really pulling me in and getting me all tense. Moving on to the fourth inning, the coach says someone just needs to make it on base. If Asuma steps up to bat with nobody on base, the pitcher will not throw him a single pitch worth hitting. Or so says the coach, at least. So they really gotta get a good hit. Yeah, of course they can't do it. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. Now that Asuma has to step up to bat with no runners on base, we get to see whether or not the coach's call was accurate. Ball 4. Well, yeah, of course it was. W what did you expect? As Akachi gets ready to step up to plate, talking all big, he also gets swiftly dealt with. They're really showing us how much of a threat this pitcher is. Nobody can get a single hit past him. But Ko is of course no lesser of a pitcher, as he also manages to shut out a beast like Mishima. Not by walking him, but by, and I quote, throwing a ball so fast it overpowered the bat. F fucking what? How? Uh, how the fuck? This man is a tiny little high school boy. This shit makes no sense. How is he throwing balls like this? What is? Is is this a shotgun? Like what? What's up with this guy's arm? But with that, the fourth inning closes off with Mishima's drag bunt still being the only hit on ball that Ko has let happen. We will ignore the fact that the rival's pitcher has an actual no-hitter and not just a one-hitter because he's lame and he keeps walking Asuma like a pussy. But that's just about to change. As Asuma steps up to bat with the commentators talking about the possible no-hitter Ryu Academy might display in the background, he goes for it. He hits it. All he gets is first base. The base he would've gotten anyway just by letting the ball fly by. There was seemingly no point in going for such a hard to hit pitch. Except for just putting a hit on the board. But for Asuma, that's reason enough. Now with a runner on second base after the fourth batter sacrificed himself, Akashi steps up to bat. With Ko leaving a simple request with him. Don't leave it all up to me. 
Akashi is supposed to be the cleanup hitter. So it's about time he shows what a cleanup hitter is supposed to do. The ball zooms past the glove and darts through the infield, giving Ozma all the time he needs to just barely score the first point. But the inning ain't over yet. Cole steps up to plate with a runner on third base. And with the pitcher now upset over letting a run pass, he starts throwing straights down the middle. He even manages to hit the big 150 kilometers an hour. As the crowd goes wild, Cole just doesn't seem to get it. It's 150 kilometers supposed to be fast? That was a very intense top ending, but now we must move on to the bottom of the seventh. And after Ko easily strikes out the first two batters, it's that time again. It's Mishima time. Ball! Strike! Another pitch reaches 156 kilometers an hour. And as Aoba sees this, she confidently says, he promised he would hit 160 kilometers an hour this morning. And let me just pause the baseball for a second to go back to this conversation here. Specifically, this last question Aoba asked. Does Ko like Akane more than Aoba? As you may remember, we never got to see this answer. But this right here is as good as an answer as any. Since this means the conversation continued off screen, and while they were on the topic of who Ko liked more, he promised he would throw that 160 km an hour pitch. And as you must remember, since someone has brought it up so much, Aoba's type is someone who can throw 160 km an hour. This is just peak riding. Like, mwah. I'm sorry, but I, I had to get on my knees real quick. Back to the baseball now. The next pitch is 157 kilometers an hour. Mishima managed to hit it, but it's a foul ball. 158 kilometers an hour. And just like that, he strikes out Mishima. Two kilometers away from 160. He can do it. Everyone is excited, shocked. This is the performance of a lifetime. But Ko's not impressed, and neither is Aoba, since he didn't hit 160. The seventh inning ends with the score at 1-0, and so does the eighth, despite Ryu trying their very best just to tie it up. This brings us to the ninth inning. The top of the ninth inning flies by with our guy not being able to score any insurance runs, leading us to the bottom of the ninth, which could very well be the final inning. The first batter goes out without a hitch, but the second banner manages to get a hit, which takes him all the way to second base. But Ko doesn't seem bothered at all. A hit is all they need to tie it up. But Ko doesn't let it get to him. He just keeps pitching. But they manage to get free. As one of the fielders misses the ball completely, they end up giving off a run, tying the game up and sending it to extra innings. I mean, come on guys. It's the finals. You think this manga is gonna let it end on the ninth inning? Hell no. We enter the 10th inning with Asuma on plate. And looking at the other side, it seems we're going to be seeing Mishima bat first in the bottom of the 10th as well. And this means the rival team's pussy-ass pitcher is finally going to pitch to Asuma and not walk him to make sure Ko does the same to Mishima. So this... This ought to be interesting. Asuma hits the ball, but doesn't quite make a home run. But getting to third base is absolutely not shabby at all. Now all they need is a hit. Barely even a hit, a button will do. That final push into goal. And coming up is just the guy to do it. Akashi. The same man who knocked Asuma in for their first run. If anyone can do it, it's gonna be him. No, no, never mind. Yep. Oh, they're walking him. Yeah, they're, w they're fucking walking him. What? But, it's not over yet. As Cole is stepping up next, and him, he used to be the home run champion, so maybe just- Oh no, they're, wa they're walking him too. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> the rest of the top of the 10th inning goes by with a huge play by Asma going to waste. Now we're moving on to the bottom of the inning, with the rival team only needing a single run to win. And with Mishima stepping up to play it, things are looking scary. The first pitch. Even in the 10th inning, Ko hits 157 kilometers an hour. Second pitch. The 
Luckily, it ends up just barely being a foul, and that makes for two strikes. Third pitch. The ball zooms through the field, but Asma jumps, and thankfully, he gets it. With the ball traveling at such speed, it sends him flying back and landing with a loud thud on the ground. But he holds on to the ball, despite everything, and Mishima is taken out. The rest of the inning goes by smoothly, and we move on to the 11th inning. Quick intermission before that, there's these pages that show the weird cousin who's in love with Aoba and what he's doing. And at a certain point, he finds Aoba's diaries over the years and decides to read them all, because he's a fucking freak oh, like that. And although he doesn't find any mention of her being in love with anyone, he finds that ever since elementary school up until now, she's been insulting Ko in everything he does. Just how long has she been watching what he does? That's what he asks himself. Alright, that's all I wanted to say. Back to the game. Need to ask where Mishima gets to bat this inning, so nothing really happens. Like, really, there's like three pages covering it. Since the author didn't want to waste page on non-interesting slot, which um, I can respect. Now, moving on to the 12th inning, though, we do have Asuma batting here. Now, obviously, he does get walked, but he, he was on plate. But... Akashi actually managed to get a hit just for it to lead to both him and Asuma getting taken out. Y yeah, um, something tells me this game might go on for a while. Or will it? What is, what is Ko doing? As he steps up to play, he hands some guy a coin. No, no, it's a, it's a token. A token from the batting rage. Could this mean? Home run. Of course it was. <laughs> what else would it be? He is the home run champion at the batting center after all. Well, um, actually, I will fucking castrate you. Shut the fuck up. Moving on to the bottom of the 12th inning, our boys are holding a 2-1 lead. And if Ryu Academy don't score a run here, we walk away with the win. Ko starts off with a horrible first pitch, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it leads to a hit, but it's luckily salvaged by our outfielders. But surely that was a one-time flu- no, no, the second batter gets an even better hit and gets first base. Wh what's going on here? When we get a closer look at Ko, the question answers itself. He's tired. Well, of course he is. He's been pitching, batting, and running for hours now, and in 34 degrees of heat. I may or may not put the American equivalent to that on screen, depends if I'm feeling nice or not when I'm editing this. But despite how worn out Ko looks, he simply asks, can I go all out now? Ko isn't this tired because he's been going all out for too long. He's tired because he's been trying to control himself. Well, in reality, it's probably a mix of both, but I love hyping this guy up. And he gets the okay to finally go all out. Meaning, it all rests on this ending. It all ends here, win or lose. We move on to the third batter with a running on first base, and Mishima's present looming since we know he's coming up next. But this doesn't shake Ko as he throws. One, two, three, strike out. But now it's time for the real battle. As Mishima walks up to base, the crowd chants his name. The correct place to walk him. Anyone with a half a brain can figure that much out, but Ko just isn't that type of pitcher. Strike! Ball! The speed, 158 kilometers an hour. Foul ball! Oh, come on. You aren't really going to throw 160, are you, Ko? Ball! Two strikes and three balls on the board. It's the final pitch, win or lose. Ball! This may seem like a disappointment, but the rival coach ensures you that it isn't. Normally, Mishima would have swung at those. He would have hit them. 
but not this one. He watched it fly right by him. Why? Because that was just way too fast to hit. They didn't show just how fast it was, but it was visibly the fastest pitch yet. And with that, Mishima declares that the game is already over. And as Ko throws his last few pitches, we get to finally hear what he said to Aoba this morning. We're going to the Koshen. I'll hit 160. And I love Aoba Tsukishima more than anyone else. They win the game 2-1. And after 12 innings, 12 very well fought innings, they're going to the fucking Koshen. Ko is completely fucking dead. And rightfully so, honestly, as he literally just played the most important and intense match of his life. But he still has something to do. He promised Asuma he would give Aoba a big hug. It's finally time to move on. This story ends here. But for Ko, it's only the beginning. Ko has lived for Wakaba until now. He didn't join the baseball team until he found out it was her dream. He didn't even consider other girls because they weren't her. Every day on his own birthday, he spends it getting a gift for her. No matter what it is, no matter how hard it is to get, he gets it. He does anything, even become a slave for a day just to get it. Whatever it is she has written on this list, he gets it, since they share a birthday. Even when Akane moved in, he had to think twice about getting too close to her because he thinks Wakaba wouldn't have approved. It has been about her all along. But as Ko stands with Oma, waiting for the train that will take them to the Koshen, they hold hands. Remember that last line in that one scene I just keep referencing. But even if he does, you can't have him. We don't know whether or not that throw from Ko reached 160. The reason we don't know is because it doesn't matter. Whether Ko managed to reach 160 or not was never going to be what made Aoba and Ko get together. It was only a question of whether or not they had the strength to go directly against Wakapa's wishes. And they finally did. Getting to the Koshen was technically the goal of this manga, yes. But not really. You see, the real goal was to finally move on. To finally move past the pain of the hole Wakaba has left. Since it's not a hole you can fill. People just aren't replaceable. And obviously she will never come back. But you have choices. Or one choice. And that choice is to try to live your life regardless. <laughs>